Escaping from prison is a difficult task. Security elements including CCTV, motion detectors, barred windows, high walls, barbed wire, electric fencing, and armed guards are common in prisons. The top 10 actual prison breaks that will astound you are next in video. Number 10. Jack Shepard Jack Shepard's numerous jailbreaks earned him almost celebrity status in 18th century London. Despite having trained as an apprentice carpenter, he concluded in 1723 that a life of crime would provide him with a more fulfilling livelihood. He made four prison escapes in 1724, three hours after his initial arrest. Shepard made his getaway. Using a rope created from bed linens, he broke through the ceiling and dropped to the floor. He was detained once more three weeks later. Following his ultimate apprehending, Shepard was restrained with 300 pounds of iron weights and kept under continual observation. The 16th of November, 1724, saw his execution. Number 9. Hines, Houdini Alfred George Hines was imprisoned for 12 years at Nottingham Prison in England after being apprehended in 1953 for jewelry robbery. Despite his denials of guilt, Hines was able to break out of the prison by slipping past the guarded entrance and scaling a 20-foot wall. Six months later, he was arrested once more. Hines was given a trial after filing a lawsuit alleging that the arrest was unlawful. At the courthouse, Hines had a partner put screw eyes in one of the restroom stalls and sneak in a padlock. After Hines' handcuffs were taken off by two guards, he shoved them inside the restroom stall and locked them inside. Five hours later, he was apprehended at the airport and taken to Chelmsford Prison. In less than a year, Hines managed to flee Chelmsford. Two years later, he was apprehended once more and served the balance of his sentence. Number 8. The Biggest British Prison Breakout One of the jails in all of Europe that was thought to be the most difficult to escape from was Her Majesty's prison maze. There were 18-foot concrete walls, 15-foot fences, and electronically operated gates made of solid steel around each jail block. Numerous members of the Irish Republican Army who had been found guilty of violent crimes were imprisoned at this prison in Northern Ireland. 38 Irish Republican prisoners broke out of the Mays prison on September 25, 1983. Using rifles that had been smuggled into the jail, the inmates took control of their eight block just after 2.30 p.m. The driver of a truck carrying food supplies was forced to drive out of the prison at 3.25 after it was overtaken and his foot became trapped in the clutch. Within a few days of the escape, 19 of the fugitives were apprehended. Because of the politics in Northern Ireland, amnesties have been granted to the remaining escapees, even though some of them were subsequently located and extradited. Number 7. Pascal Payet one of the guards was killed in 1997 when Pascal Payet took part in the heist of an armored vehicle owned by the Banque de France. He broke out of jail on October 12, 2001, using an aircraft that had been taken over. Using a second hijacked helicopter, he managed the escape of three of his fellow conspirators in 2003. After being apprehended, he was given sentences of 30 years for the murder in 1997 seven years for the escape in 2003, and an additional six years for the 2000 and one escape. Payet was sent to a new prison every few months and eventually became one of the most intensively monitored inmates in all of France. Despite these measures, on July 14, 2007, four guys in masks took control of a different helicopter and helped Payet escape from a grass prison. He was apprehended once more in Mataro, Spain. Two months later, his whereabouts at the moment are kept under wraps. Number 6. David Sweat and Richard Matt Richard Matt, 48, and David Sweat, 34, broke out of the Clinton Correctional Facility in Danamora, New York, on June 6, 2015. 51-year-old Joyce Mitchell, who worked in a prison tailor shop, had sex encounters with both prisoners, gave them illegal tools, asked them to kill her husband, and made plans to travel to Mexico with the two violent criminals. Using power tools, Richard Matt 
and David Sweat opened the back of their neighboring cells, revealing a six-story tall catwalk that led to a network of pipelines and tunnels. They made a 400-foot escape via a manhole in the town of Danamora after slicing through a two-foot wide pipe. Joyce Mitchell, who was supposed to meet the two and give them a getaway car, was nowhere to be seen. On June 26, Matt was slain by police, and two days later, Sweat was apprehended. Number 5. The Magnificent Escape During World War II, captured Air Force men were detained at Stalag Luft II, a prisoner of war camp administered by the Germans. In the spring of 1943, plans were started for the mass escape of several hundred captives. Thirty feet below the surface, three tunnels with the code names Tom, Dick, and Harry were excavated. The purpose of the pumps was to force new air into the tunnels. There were installed lights that connected to the prison's electrical system. To make digging easier, the inmates even set up a little rail car system. On March 24, 1944, on a moonless night, 200 prisoners attempted to break free. One of the guards noticed the 77th man through the tunnel, and the escape was promptly thwarted. Only three inmates were able to get away. The remaining detainees were apprehended, and 50 of them were executed. Number 4. The Tunnel of the Taliban The Mujahideen started construction of a 1,000-foot tunnel in Kandahar at the end of 2010, intending to free hundreds of Taliban rebels. The five-month-long tunnel ran under watchtowers, government buildings, razor wire-topped obstacles, and an Afghan prison's concrete floor. In less than half an hour on April 25, 2011, 480 convicts were liberated through crawling. Before the escape, the Taliban had obtained keys that they used to unlock their friend cells. Minibuses waited on the other side of the tunnel, ready to transport the hundreds of fugitives out of the strongly guarded region. Building a 1,000-foot tunnel with a sturdy rubber ventilation tube is amazing, but what's even more amazing is that no one stopped it. Number 3. The Korean Houdini Choi Gapbok 53-year-old Choi Gapbok is a skilled yoga practitioner as well as a convicted felon with more than 20 years in prison. 25 years ago, Choi broke out of imprisonment by sliding through the bars of a bus, transporting inmates to a detention facility. Two days later, he was apprehended. For the majority of his two decades in and out of prison, Choi decided to practice yoga. He was prepared to carry off an even more spectacular escape on September 17, 2012. He put skin ointment all over his torso and covered his pillows with a blanket to make it look like he was still in bed when the guards went to sleep. Six days later, he was captured and put in a cage with an even smaller food slot. It appears that some people use yoga for purposes beyond physical fitness. Number 2. The Nazi Germany Death Camp at Sobibor the Nazis executed 10 captives for each person who tried to flee their extermination camps during World War II. Rumors started to surface by 1943, claiming that the Nazis planned to dismantle the camps and execute every prisoner. As prisoners at Sobibor, Leon Feldhendler and Alexander Pekersky concluded that dying in the process of attempting to flee was preferable to being murdered in a gas chamber. The idea was to kill the SS officials, launch a coordinated attack by all of the prisoners, and then wait for the Ukrainian guards to flee. Nine SS officers and two guards were slain after being isolated on October 14, 1943. After executing the last 300 detainees, the Germans shut down the camp. Of the escapees, just 58 made it through the war. Number 1. Frank Abagnale Leonardo DiCaprio plays the infamous con artist Frank Abagnale in the movie Catch Me, If You Can. Abagnale defrauded banks and passed for a pilot, a lawyer, or a doctor to evade being discovered and being imprisoned. He was identified by an Air France flight attendant in 1969, who notified the authorities. Before being extradited to the United States, he was imprisoned for six months in both Sweden and France. Abagnale fled the plane as soon as it landed at JFK Airport, hoping to reach Canada, 
but he was soon caught. Abagnale broke out of a federal prison in Atlanta, Georgia in 1971. Then he made the guards believe he was an undercover prison inspector in dire need of getting in touch with the FBI. After calling his pal, Abagnale left the jail, got into his car, and sped off. Did you like it? Tell us what you think of the video in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting videos.